welcome back. It's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a chain link fence. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So let's get arting. All right, so here's the chain link fence. I find it easier, um, you know, when I'm sketching it out to just make a bunch of squares so that I can kind of keep it straight and even. But otherwise, you know, it's relatively straightforward. So when you're drawing a chain link fence, I've chosen this uh, gray, and I'm gonna draw kind of above where the line of the square is. Um, and so, you know, just gonna come down here, and just like with animals, right, this is just a sketching step, because chain link fences can be relatively thin, I'm not really worried about making it thick yet. I'm gonna come here just past this line, and we're gonna loop it down. Now, chain link fences are sort of bound together, right? So. This one's looping down, while this one's coming up underneath and blocking its axis there, right? So you want sort of that loop to happen. And then we'll just connect that in. And then we'll thicken it up after we kind of get this pattern in. So then, you know, we're bringing it down and over a little bit, over a little better than what I did. And you want to keep to the same pattern, right? So this is my line over, um, which means this is over. And you'll see that we'll deviate a little as we go. And this is under. Comes down and then loops this way. And so you start building that up. You can kind of see that there. And we'll fix this line as we go. Um, which means, right, like this is over. And as this is coming in, this is this will be under. So you need to kind of line those up. And this will be under and coming across. So as this comes in, it'll be over. And as this comes in, it'll be under. We need to keep to that pattern. That's how we'll make the chain link fence. And then we won't be able to see it in this corner, but this would have been over, right? And so then you have the one that's coming under. Hold on, let's back that up. Same is true up here, so I, yeah, okay. So it's relatively straightforward um, on how we do it. All right, so this is over, and this one is under. We can re-angle these just a little, right? Like I can pull this back up just that little bit to go over, and then you go under. Over. It's not the end of the world if you get yourself confused. I have done that um, and forgotten which ones were over and under and reversed them. It's not always noticeable because of the amount of detail we're putting in here. Um, but, you know, do your best to kind of keep it on that same pattern. Just bringing it in. And the sketch here is really just a guideline. This is just so that I can keep my squares mostly straight, roughly the same size. Comes under. So 
before. And this one comes under. Oops, let's line that up a little better. So once again, it goes off the edge. Because this is a lot of fantastic detail that you can put in with a chain link fence and that's what's really going to make it look like it's a real chain link fence. Surprisingly I've drawn um, several in my art career. I don't know that that is something I would have thought I ever would have done a lot of, but you know, it happens. Surprisingly. So that coming over, this one coming under. So, and it doesn't matter which one you choose to do what, like you can flip this so that, you know, the top one comes over in different spots, but they have to connect on all of their corners. So their corners will be overlapping with each other. You can choose that pattern, um, but you do need to do that pattern, right? I'm gonna lay this down. So super, super quick. And then once we do it, I'll uh, show you how to thicken it up and then add a little bit of highlighting. It's a chain link fence, so you can really get a nice burst of highlight. We'll pop that off and we have, you know, roughly a chain link fence. So, now, um, first I'm going to fix, I'm going to fix this guy. We will be thickening them up, but I think he's a little, he's a little much at the moment. Okay. So now let's thicken them up. All right, we left ourselves gaps. That's why there's a little bit of a gap here. But you can just sort of make this a thicker fence. Don't have to put a ton of pin pressure while I'm doing this, but I'm not really holding back because there won't be there won't be a ton of noticeable shadows. And I'm gonna give myself some space for the bottom one. Right, so as this guy comes down we gotta do the same thing. Give him some room. And so the, the um, shadows and highlights that we typically do with animals don't have to be as careful with the chain link fence because of how thin it is. Right, and then we're gonna have that coming under. Just making sure you're leaving yourself room to do that. Right, and when you back out, you can kind of see it. Now, we will be adding um, some shadows and highlights um, but, and it's the shadows and highlights that'll really sell it. And right now I'm just thickening up the lines, but again, I, just, I don't, you don't have to hold back. So this is just, you know, literally just drawing the lines in and making sure you're leaving yourself enough space for, um, for each of the links as they come into each other. It's easy to forget to do, especially once you get into a groove. I've certainly done it but um, it can be easy to readjust. All right, and just follow these little lines. Other thing to be careful of and to be mindful of is that, you know, as you're looping it, you're connecting back in to a point where you released it, right? Like I don't want to come over here and like, weight it heavy this way, and then have this line pick up back over here, that won't work. Um, 
So I need to make sure that as I do it, right, as I bring this in, I'm, I'm kind of keeping that weight in the middle and then picking it up on either side where I've left it off. Same up here, right? Like I'm gonna bring that down. And now I need to make sure that this line over here picks up from where this one left off. Otherwise it'll look out of place. But that's because they're so close together, you know, it's not, it's not a hard thing to do. You just have to be um, sort of mindful about what you're doing and how you're doing it, that everything's lining up. But otherwise, you know, super, super easy to do. And even though I have that sketchy style, right, you know, chain link fences have wobble in them, you know, you don't have to have that perfect line. Um, because even when we pull back, you know, you can see it. You can see the chain links. And when we add the shadows and highlights, it'll make them look even better. You can even keep them this thin. I've done them this thin before. The reason I'm thickening it up is it gives more chance to add um, a little bit more detail. And so it kind of depends, one, on how big you're making them, um, like to your, your subject, right? Are we really zoomed in on something? Are we really far away? may depend on, on, you know, those factors will likely change how you're drawing it. Um, but otherwise, relatively straightforward. If you want more detail, you can make it thicker, basically. But if it's really far away, you know, maybe not as much. And so here, you know, I'm just going to line these two up. I've already started this bulk here, so I just have to make sure I line up where they connect in. Even if they're stray lines, I know I'm usually careful about that. Because the chain link fence um, is usually a supplementary element in a drawing, it's not my subject, I'm not always as careful. And the chain link fence has the added benefit of having so much detail, but incredibly subtle detail that. Um, a few errant lines coming off, I'm not necessarily as worried about, even though it's metal and it, it wouldn't have that. Um, I mean, I'm, I try to line it up, but if I don't, I don't, I don't stress over it, basically. If I didn't get it perfect, it's really not going to kill the composition. Just like you know, sometimes I've gotten myself mixed up over what's over and what's under and where it's over and under. Um, and that often, you know, it's usually fine. See here, I came out a little bit further than I had this line, so either I need to bring that in or bring this out. We're going to bring it out because I thought I was already thinking it was too thin. <laughs> And I gotta be careful on this corner because once I do thicken it up, they do actually run together. So I need to make sure that there's actually this loop happening so that as he comes down, it looks more like he's looping underneath. So sometimes you have to add just that little bit, but that's easy enough. Oh, you know what I didn't do though. <laughs> didn't add where he's over on the back side. It's easy enough to do. You just add a little um, loop and it's done.
All right, so I have a few that I do need to fix up um, where their sketch lines were just a little out of control. But other than that, we are basically done thickening up the fence. And it doesn't have to be this thick. Like I said, you can change that. So I'm just going to take the select tool, though, and trim this guy. He was a little... He was a little thick. He had a few too many stray lines. Maybe I'm going to come do that little snag. All right. So there we go. Now we have our chain link fence. So if we want to add some highlights, can I think about a light source still? I mean, that's the chain link fence. We still want to do that. Um, so we have it coming from the left. What I'm going to do is thicken up just adding like a little bit of a line on all of them in that direction, mindful that it's from the left. And so this is full pin pressure. This will also help us visually sort out that you know, this line is coming up over the other one. And almost as a line, right? Like I'm not having to do um, a whole lot of you know, maneuvering or filling in. It's just, you know, following that line, trying to stay in the middle towards the top, but, um, you know, that's not as easy. So, right, we have this guy that'd be coming over. So we'll have that. And then even that little bit on the corner, because we have it coming over. And since it's on the left, above and to the left, only really doing the ones that are um, more aimed in that direction right now. But you can definitely see it. This isn't the only thing we're going to do, though. We're going to add a little bit more like a burst of white in select spots. Come over. Realistically, if we want to add a good sense of depth to all of them, we can. You know, right now I'm only doing it on those, but we can easily do it on the others as well. And I usually do. In fact, we probably will. We'll get all of these done first, kind of on a roll in this direction. And then uh, change it up. But this will help sell it, right? This will help give us that visual cue. Because while the links we've already done are fine, this will really make it clear what's over and under and how they're linked together, right? Because we're adding that highlight right there on that linking point. But we don't have a lot of room to work with, so, you know, like, when we're dealing with animals like that too, and we don't have a lot of room to work with, sometimes you end up highlighting a little bit outside of where you, you would prefer, but it's fine. So we'll add that little burst, burst of light on these other sections now. Mindful of how they're interacting. So the underneath, as this loops together, are going to back off that pin pressure, allow the top one to, to win out. And try to keep in the middle as much as you can Although it's so small a space, um, 
probably can't. I know I can't. I'm not as I do it. Aim for it, but if you don't, it's it's not going to kill it. Um, and now that we've already done the, the top one, we don't have to do the loops. We're just doing those angles down. So loops are technically already done. And then we will add some white, and then we'll be done. Chain link fence is pretty easy, pretty quick to do. What's nice is you can build this in, and then you have a resource you can use on other drawings. If you ever need a chain link fence, well, now you have it. You have kind of this, this resource here. OK, now we are going to add a burst of white. Now, this is only going to go in select ones and in select spots. So we're going to have a burst of white here. Here, right, my light source is above and to the left, so I'm only going to be doing this on the links that are aimed a certain way. One and two, depending on the angle, we could even do it on these loops. It would really add a nice burst there, but right now we're not going to. We're going to do it just here. Just kind of in between. Following that edge. So that when we pull back, it's clearly like a burst of highlight here. And you can see it. And you can even see when you didn't get one. Don't want it on the back side though. Want it more towards the top. Like I said, we could add some right here on the corners. You know, you can add a lot of little highlighting effects here because chain link fences are, are bright, right? You have that that burst. Alright, so that is how you draw a chain link fence. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.